Welcome to the Summer Vibes series. These beginner videos are designed to help new users learn the basics of Marvelous Designer. In this tutorial, we will make the unicorn floaty. First, I will import an avatar for scale reference. Go to Library, Avatar, Stylized, and double click on Hannah to import her into the workspace. This is only for the scale of the prop. Once she's imported, we will work in the 2D space. I will close the library window and then pop out the pattern tools using the scissor icon. Using the ellipse tool, click and drag while holding shift to create a perfect circle. I am making it from her hand to the ground in height. Let go to create the pattern. The material will apply when you release the left mouse button. To create the donut shape, use the internal shape tools to the right of the pattern shape tools in the 2D toolbar. Hold shift and click and drag to create another circle inside of the first. Make this circle a little more than a quarter of the diameter. Using the Edit Pattern tool or the A hotkey, click and move the internal shape to match the nodes of the circle pattern so that it is centered within the pattern itself. To create the basic donut shape, right click the internal circle and select Convert to Whole in the drop down menu. This is our base pattern. Let's rotate this in the 3D window. In the 3D window, use the gizmo by clicking once on the pattern and rotate using the axis handles. Rotate it so that the white side is facing down and then simulate with the spacebar or the simulate button. Now that we have the scale of this pattern, we can delete the avatar. Select the avatar and then use the delete key to remove her from the scene. Then I will move my pattern to the center of my workspace. Simulate after you move it so that your pattern touches the ground. There is a dark side and a light side. The dark side is the flipped normal. White side is the normal. We always want our normals facing out if we can. So let's make another pattern. In the 2D window, right click and choose layer clone under. This will create a copy on the flipped normal side. And when checking it in the 3D window, it's also applied sewing relationships to our donut shape. The normal is not facing the direction we want. Right click and choose remove linked editing. And then in the 3D window, right click and choose flip normal. Now our normals are facing away from each other. Go ahead and simulate and check the normals one more time. Using shift to select both patterns in the property editor to the right under simulation properties, we can go down to pressure and we'll just turn that up to the highest number, which is 70. For a more accurate representation of the plastic material that's used on pool floaties, we can go ahead and select fabric next. Going up to the fabric window, double clicking on fabric one, then going down to the bottom and selecting physical properties for the material. Here I will select nylon canvas since it is a very similar material to the plastic or PVC that is often used. Once that is simulated, go ahead and save this as your base inner tube pattern. You can save this by going up to file, save as project and save it as whatever you'd like. I'm gonna name it a uh, donut. Once you've saved your basic pattern for your intertube, we can go ahead and make our modifications. We're going to be making a lot of changes, so we're going to right click and freeze the bottom of this pattern so that it won't move. We could also apply some pins using the W hotkey with a left click to create single pin points. To hold that in place so that when we turn freeze off for the final step, it won't move on us. So make sure you've applied those pins and your donut is frozen before you start. Next, we're going to be making the hole for the head. So using the internal ellipse tool one more time, I'll just pop that out so you can see it. I'm going to create a circle, holding control and shift to make it a perfect circle coming up from the center of where I click. And then I can check and see the shape in the 3D window. I need this to be less of a perfect circle and more of an oval. So I am using the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey, and I'm using the arrows to move the circle points inward. Then I'm going to right click and convert those to curve points. And then using the V as in Victor hotkey or the edit 
curve point tool, I'm going to delete those points, points that I moved just to smooth out that curve. Using the edit pattern tool, select one half of that circle that we created and click on it once to get a line measurement. We can use that line measurement to make the pattern that sews into the neck. Using the polygon tool, we can create our shape with the left click once and then right click to bring up a dialog box where you can import your exact distance. Import your number here. Continue with a basic head shape for the head of your unicorn, and when you're done, close the shape by meeting the first point to the final point. We have half of the head, we need to make the other half so we can create the inflated balloon effect again. In the 2D window, right click the head pattern and choose Create Symmetric Pattern with Sewing. Left click once to place it in the workspace. To attach these onto the tube we made, we need to create sewing relationships. We didn't have to use sewing tools earlier because the layer clone creates sewing by default. To sew, go up to the toolbar and you'll see the sewing tools. I will pop them out and use the segment sewing tool, making sure the necks of the heads are facing forward. So sew the right side to the right side and left side to the left side. The notches come out of the sewing line indicate the beginning direction of the sewing. Then using the free sewing tool, sew the head pieces together by clicking to start and to finish the lines. Make sure to start on the same direction of each one. If you get confused, you can always sew in the 3D window and also rotate your pattern in the 3D space. So here I will rotate the heads using the gizmo tool again so that they're facing the exact direction I want them to face when I sew them to the body of this inner tube. This way I can also double check my work so I don't have any crossing sewing lines. Once it looks good, simulate and make sure that you have pressure applied to those patterns. Again, I'm using 70 pressure. Here I will use strengthen or control H to stabilize the simulation of the pattern piece. This will turn my pattern orange. Next is turning this polygon into a head. Using the curve point tools and edit curvature tools, begin shaping the face. I will pop out the edit pattern tools so you can see which ones I'm using. As you work, continue simulating periodically as you make changes and see how it looks. Continue to adjust the shape until you are happy with the look in the 3D space. It doesn't have to look perfect in the 2D space because what is most important is how it looks in 3D. I have sped up the editing of the head of this horse just for the sake of time. Go ahead and keep making edits until you are happy with the basic shape. It's not necessary, but if you want to change the material view, go to the 2D display window, and I like to make my material transparent. Once we are done with the head, we can give the unicorn its mane. I intentionally did not make the mane a part of the head, so here's how you're going to do it the hard way. Using the polygon tool, go ahead and trace the side of the neck that you want to attach the mane to. For this, I will add a wiggly line for the edges and make it more cute. If it's not perfectly matching the edges of the pattern that you want to sew the mane into, you can match the curve points of the mane to the curve points of the neckline. If it's not perfectly matching the edges of your pattern that you want to attach it to, just match the curve points of the mane to the neckline. This will make the shape almost perfect. Again, I am just changing the shape of my mane now that I have aligned it a little bit better.
While my lines are overlapped, I'm applying a segment point using the X hotkey to the head pattern so that I can use the segment sewing tool. Then doing the same as before, we have a right main, we need a left main. So in this case, we're gonna use control C, control D for symmetric pattern with sewing. Then using the sewing tools again, I'll use the segment sewing tool to sew the main to the neck and then the main to itself. Afterwards, make sure that you have 70 pressure value for that main. Once you're done, go ahead and use the space bar to simulate it into place. The pattern went into place, but it's a little bit difficult to pull out because of the particle distance and the size of the pattern. Going to the property editor and the particle distance, I'm reducing the particle distance down to five so I can have a more accurate simulation. Then I will do the same to the head patterns as well. That way I get more of an accurate representation of how it will look when it's finished. Once you are satisfied with how it looks, we can stop simulating and then freeze our patterns one more time and begin making the ears and the horn. For the horn and the ears, we're going to create a lot of circles. We will create another internal ellipse where the ears might be placed. Hold shift while you click and drag to create your perfect internal ellipse. If you don't like where you have placed it the first time, you can use the edit pattern tools or the transform pattern tool to move it in space in the 2D window. Next, we are going to create the ears. They're going to be a cone. Go ahead and use the polygon tool to just draft a small cone. We're gonna change the shape here in a minute. Double clicking on that circle to get the line length or the circumference of it. We can then use that number and apply it to the base of our cone. Using the C hotkey or the edit curvature tool, we can then try to make that line length of that base as close as we can to the same length of that circle. We can also use the change length option with right click and make the length exactly that number. If you do this, make sure to select both, not just one side. Adjust the cone, and then using the segment sewing tool or the N hotkey, sew the cone to itself, Use free sewing to sew the base of the cone to the internal ellipse. Like we've been doing before, make sure to select your circle pattern and apply pressure. Again, we're doing 70. And then simulate. For ears, my pattern is definitely too tall and it's intersecting with itself. So I'm gonna use the edit pattern tool to shorten those ears. And my pattern is small, just like my main. So I'm going to edit my particle distance down to five again, then simulate. This will help with any collision issues at the apex of the cone. We've done one side, next is to make the other side, using Control C, Control D to make a symmetrically linked pattern. Once you're satisfied with the ears, onto the horn next. The horn will still be across the center of the face, so make sure to place the circle centered on one of the lines as best you can. As you place it, it is best to make sure that the line it is on is a straight line. Since this head is symmetrically linked, you only have to do this once. I'm rotating the segment points on this circle, so it is bisecting the head of the horse so I can make sure it's as close to the center as I can. Once you're happy with its spot, go ahead and measure the line length on the half and try to remember that number because that's gonna be your number. Then going up to the ears we made earlier, copy and just paste one of those ears and that's gonna become our horn. Doing the same trick for the line length again, and apply your number and change the length. This time the horn's gonna be bigger than the ears, so I've just increased the length. Since this is going to be divided into two, we're going to use the free sewing tool and sew half of the head to half of the horn and then do the same to the other side, making sure to go in the same direction as best you can so you don't cross over your sewing. You can check how it looks in the 3D window before you simulate. Remember that you can always pull at the pattern while it's simulating to get it to be more stable if you need to. This is still at five particle distance, so just kind of pull at it and double check your work. Once it looks pretty good, you can also apply the strengthening to the entire pattern and try to stabilize any pieces that might be giving you trouble. Unfreeze the top body to check the work. 
for the ears, we are going to turn them into holes, but we can't do that with the horn because it's going outside of the pattern. So select the ear ellipses and convert them into a hole, and we will leave the horn's internal ellipse alone. Then doing the same to the tube pattern. Right click and convert to hole. Next, we're gonna make the tail, but we won't make it from scratch. We're gonna use the assets we made a minute ago. To do that, we will copy the head and internal circle so we have less work to do. Starting with the head pattern, just copying the two head pattern pieces, nothing else, and then the internal ellipse and placing it on the opposite side of that top pattern, just like we did in the beginning. So the next to the internal circle one more time. If your speed is slow, you can freeze the rest of your patterns again with Control J. Making the particle distance for this pattern back to 20, and you can see my head sewed on backwards, so the direction doesn't matter much. Using the edit pattern tools, go ahead and start modifying this to start looking like a tail. I'm deleting some of those points and starting to draw them in the shape that I want this tail to look like. I've deleted a majority of my points and then I'm aiming for a curved shape for this tail. So continue to simulate as you make changes to your shape just like I am. Using Control H to strengthen and fix the collision issues. And if you're impatient like I am, you can also stop simulation and move one of the patterns out in the 3D space, then turn simulation back on. Using the Edit Curve Point tool, I'm aiming to make the curved tail. So I'll delete the severe point and make it into a more curved shape. Again, this one's definitely up to you, but go ahead and just keep modifying your tail until it looks good in the 3D window. As I'm playing around with the shape of my pattern, I am changing the sewing line that it's going into the base, and that does affect the pattern the most. My tail ends up looking a bit like a baseball cap in my 2D window. Yours might not look exactly like mine, and don't worry about it. It's really up to you how you want this final design to look. I'm trying to go for a rainbow shaped tail so I can do a rainbow texture. Once you're happy with the shape, we can apply Control H or strengthening one more time to make sure there's no collision issues, and then reactivate the entire pattern. Remembering that we did place pins at the very base, then making sure to select all of our patterns and reduce the particle distance down to five. Then let simulation run for a little bit so that you can get some nice wrinkles on your unicorn floaty. And this does finish the unicorn floaty. You can now save and export this project for render in your preferred 3D package. Check out the other Summer Vibes tutorial videos on how to make more of the assets seen in this render.